this is another reason that the fungus can grow under uh, extreme amounts of, or what we would consider extreme amounts of radiation. That gives an argument that, yeah, maybe a, a planet can have life on it without having such a robust and thick atmosphere and a magnetic field and kind of all the things yeah. that seem to be the secret sauce of, of the earth being able to do this. Um, and again, whether those fungus could eventually over a million years develop into advanced organisms like us, who knows? But could there be fungus on other planets like this? Yeah. I mean, I don't see why not. Well, so. yeah, that was actually, that was where I was about to go is that this to me, like you already have kind of these, we have organisms that leave in, live in extreme environments in, on earth that we were aware of already. Like the, the animals that live at the, 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 the organisms that live in the bottom or in the ocean at these vent, these geothermal vents where there's warm, like volcanic heated, you know, uh, water shooting out of these vents and there are organisms that live there. So it's like, okay, these, an these organisms don't need the sun. They don't, you know, all they're, they're in, in, they're submerged in, in water, but conceivably that could be another liquid. Um, and they're getting heat from activity inside of the planet and they, they're, they're living based on that, you know? And so that's the kind of thing that could live somewhere. I could live in Titan, you know, like one of the moons, um, you know, and then planets in our solar system. This is another example of type of life that could exist, as you said, without our, our atmosphere is blocking a lot of the radiation that would otherwise make Earth, Earth inhospitable, you know, in the same way that the moon or Mars are inhospitable because there's no way to block all that radiation. Um, and these organisms apparent or this organism apparently is able to, to very quickly was able to adapt to be able to live in a place with all that rate, with all the bunch of radiation. So it, to me, it makes pretty clear that, okay, well this, a, an organism like this or organisms could evolve and adapt to be able to live in a high radiation environment somewhere else in the solar system or, or the galaxy or the universe or whatever. So I, I was pretty fascinated by, by this and the, the possibilities that it opens up me, the, I guess said it said differently, the way that it expands, how we conceive, where life could be and where life could flourish. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I think it's also like when I look at these kind of revelations, let's say these discoveries, it always, I, I try and say to myself, you know, this is why as humanity, we just need to be humble um, because we don't know everything. I mean, think about it, James, we, we have been taught, I mean, obviously nuclear bombs and that type of extreme radiation is bad for life obviously, especially when it's got the thermal blast and all that. But I don't think anyone would have thought 30, 40 years ago that this would happen, that there would be life thriving in Chernobyl. Um, because, I mean, this wasn't part of our discussion, but there's also wolves and boars and other animals that seem to be okay in, in this higher elevated radiation, and people didn't predict that. And I think that's where my concern is today, James, with where we are as a society in our current discourse around things like AI, where we have our cultural leaders telling us that this is going to solve everything in the world and all the problems of humanity. And I think this is an example where, I mean, AI wouldn't have predicted that this fungus could eat, could eat um, radiation, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> until this happens, no one knew that this could happen. And so I just think that it's an, a, this learning about things like this is an example for me that we need to stay humble as humans. We need to always remind ourselves that we don't understand everything about the environment and the world around us and why things happen. And this is very interesting that this did happen. And to your point, if they can put it outside of spaceships and all that stuff in the future, great. Let's go learn how it happened. But it's another example of we're going to have other discoveries like this that are just going to happen off yeah. of the backs well, of yeah, I mean, it, things that seem like catastrophes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a good point and I commend you for making it. Although I would say, here's where I, I'll, I'll put my Tunde hat on and tell you that what you're saying is impossible. It's been very clear <laughs> if you study history that humans cannot survive generally without feeling like they understand everything that's going on around them. Yeah. And like if you go back 2,000 years, you can go to places and they will swear up and down to you that in order for it to rain tomorrow, they need to sacrifice a virgin. And they will be very comfortable that that is a fact and that is a true. And so they, if they had to sacrifice the right version, then the gods will be happy and it'll rain tomorrow. And so people were not walking around saying, oh, well, I don't know why it re rains and I'm OK with that. You know, like so we've always humans have always looked for 
things and made up stuff or whatever. Look, find stories, find things that will allow us to explain and be comfortable that we understand what's going on around us. And so, yes, it, it, at minimum, we should keep our eyes open so that when we see something new, we can learn from it and not ignore it because it's something that we didn't uh, actually, you know, that, that isn't accounted for in the stories we already have. But we see that that's what's happened. That would happen, you know, Christianity for the longest time was suppressing science. So that because anytime science would not confirm something that Christianity said, if, hey, well, if the earth is not the center of the universe, then you got and you say it is, then you got to die. It's like, well, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> I'm just looking out and looking at a telescope, man. Why do I got to die? But it's like, well, because our God said that the earth is, or, you know, the people that speak for our God said that the earth is the center of the universe. So 